We'll start for sample problems number 7. So they're saying negative 7, negative 24. What, that, what they're saying there is that's a point on a circle. So uh, it's got to be on the xy coordinate plane. So negative 7, negative 24, that would be kind of here. And they're saying this is the point on a, on a circle. And what's the angle, or not what's the angle, but what's the, what are the trig values for this angle? So to find those values, we just go straight from the point up to the horizontal, or down if we're above the horizontal. But from the point straight to the horizontal, and there you can see our triangle. Uh, and so this side would be negative 7, this would be negative 24, and then we want to find the value of the, of the, uh, the radius here. So 20, negative 24 squared plus negative 7 squared equals c squared or r squared, depending on how you're thinking of it. So 24 squared. 576 and then negative 7 squared is 49 so we add those together we get 625 equals c squared so c equals let's see 25 all right so that that radius there that long side that hypotenuse is 25 so the sine of the angle, whatever it is, is this angle, which is the same as the sine and cosine of, of this angle, using negative values for the sides. Okay, so that's uh, opposite over hypotenuse, negative 24 over 25. The cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, negative 7 over 25. The tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent negative 24 over 7. The cosecant will be just the reciprocal of the sine, so negative 25 over 24. The secant, secant is going to be the reciprocal of the cosine, negative 25 over 7. And the cotangent, um, Oh, you know what this is? The, the tangent was negative 24 over negative 7. So positive 24 over 7. And the reciprocal, the cotangent of theta, would be 7 over 24. So there you go. Pretty, pretty simple. Just to draw yourself a little picture, uh, make a triangle out of it, fill out the triangle, and find all the trig values based on that triangle. Okay. Um, these next ones, um, like for number 12, you're going to assume you filled out your unit circles. So if I'm looking at my unit circle for number 12 for 0 degrees, what's the sine, cosine, tangent, all that, of 0 degrees? Here's 0 degrees. And if I filled it out, I said, what's the x and y value? Well, it's 1 comma zero. That's the x and y value of this point, which turns out to be the cosine and the sine of zero degrees. Okay, and well, I've just paused the video and gone through the book, and uh, and I think I've discovered, unless I'm mistaken, that they do not say anything about these two facts, that the tangent is the sine over the cosine and that the cotangent would just be the reciprocal of that. Everything else is, <coughs> is, is what we need to know. Only they didn't say that the tangent is equal to the sine over the cosine, so that makes me mad. But now we're ready to go. If we want the sine of zero degrees, then we know it's zero just from the, the labeling of the unit circle. The cosine is 1. The tangent is 
the sine over the cosine, the sine over the cosine, 0 over 1, which is uh, 0. 0 divided by 1 is 0. So here's where it gets a little bit interesting. The cosecant of 0 degrees is the reciprocal of the sine, so that would mean that it's 1 over 0. But you can't divide by 0, we know that. So um, we'll grab our red and say, no, that's undefined. Okay, well that's okay. We'll live. We'll just go on to the secant. The secant of zero degrees would be the reciprocal of the cosine, which would be one over one, which is one. And then we go to the cotangent, and again, the reciprocal of the tangent, which is zero, would be one over zero, but then that's undefined. You can't divide by zero. Okay, so there you go, you're just looking at your unit circle to find these values and knowing that the tangent is a sine over the cosine, now that'll help quite a bit. Um, let's grab another one, we'll use radians this time uh, for 7 pi over 2. If theta is 7 pi over 2 what is the sine and cosine and everything. So we'll quickly draw a little unit circle. 7 pi over 2, let's see where that is. This is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 2. So even if we keep going round and round in circles, we're, once we stop, whatever we see in our unit circle there is going to be the sine and cosine and everything that we need. So we've labeled it, it's going to be 0 comma negative 1. So, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 2. Right there. And there we go. There's the cosine and the sine. So the sine of 7 pi over 2 radians is equal to negative 1. The cosine of 7 pi over 2 radians is 0. The tangent of 7 pi over 2 is the sine over the cosine. That would be negative 1 over 0. But then we just went over this, this is undefined. So we'll go to the cosecant of 7 pi over 2 is going to be the reciprocal of negative 1, 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1. The secant of 7 pi over 2 is going to be the reciprocal of the cosine, which is 1 over 0, which is undefined. So you can see if once they're if there's a zero in one of these values, as there was in the previous, you're going to have two of these where zeros in the denominator are they're undefined. And then the cotangent of 7 pi over 2 is just the reciprocal of this tangent, which is, flip this over, 0 over negative 1, and that would just be 0. That's OK. OK. So there you go. Uh, so we're going to sketch an angle and find the reference angle. So let's look at 18, 320 degrees. Uh, what is the reference angle again uh, from the previous video? You might remember. That, um, well, first let's sketch the angle. So we got 180 here, 270, 360, so not quite to 360, so 320 is going to be like, uh, so like somewhere in there. Okay, 320 degrees. Now this isn't an angle that's on our unit circle, but I mean it's there, but we didn't label it. Um, so what's the reference angle? Well, if we just draw that triangle again that we've been using, uh, straight up to the horizontal, this is 320. When we make the triangle, the reference angle is that one that's inside the inside this triangle right here. Okay, so how are we going to find that angle right there? Uh, and and finding a reference angle, so to me, it's a lot about drawing this picture. Because now I can see that here, 320, it, it, it puts this, this line all the way in the fourth quadrant, meaning that 
any reference angle for an angle in the fourth quadrant is just going to go from there to the you know completing 360 degrees basically so if I take 360 minus 320 I find that we have 40 degrees from here to the, the positive x-axis and that that reference angle would be this guy right here that would be the same triangle the same exact triangle the same exact sides except for maybe the positives and negatives but otherwise it's the exact same thing it's a mirror image of this triangle so there you go there's there's number 18 you just take the since the rest of that this little angle here would complete the the, the distance to 360 or the the angles to 360 uh, there you go subtract your your angle from 360 it's a little different if uh, say we're doing um, six, five, not that one let's say number 20 so number 20 if theta is negative 5 pi over 6 let's draw that angle so it's negative so it goes this way and negative 5 pi over 6 would be right over here negative 5 pi over 6 so the angle we're looking for the reference angle is the same as from here to the horizontal, whatever makes that little triangle there. So that'd be the same as this guy right here, right there. Uh, so the, you know we can look at this. It looks like this this five pi over six, even though it's negative, the magnitude of it comes over here, and the rest of the way to one eighty would be the same as this angle. So we could just do one eighty or not 180 because we're in radians. So pi minus 5 pi over 6, that would give us this distance here, this angle here. Of course, this will be 6 pi over 6, and this would be pi over 6. It's always going to be an angle that's in the first quadrant. So pi over 6 would be the reference angle for negative 5 pi over 6. And the last thing is made really easy uh, by our forethought to fill out the unit circle. So our unit circle is proven to be really useful here. Uh, the sine of negative 150. So we're looking on our unit circle, and we go to negative 150. That's way over here. Here's positive 150 would be right there. Negative 150 is right here. What is the sign of negative 150? Well, we just look at the labels here. Negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. And so the sign is this guy right here. So the sign of negative 150 is negative 1 half. So you have in your unit circle.